So I'm going to blow your minds right now because a lot of people don't know that previously I was a Democratic Party loyalist. I was one of the Kool-Aid drinkers. Like in 2014, I was part of that nerdy draft war and campaign. And I've said this before, but a lot of people don't know that. But, you know, I believed that not everyone, I was still critical of the Democratic Party and largely dissatisfied with Obama, but I did believe that overall, most Democrats wanted to do good, and to them it wasn't just necessarily about getting power um, and protecting the status quo. Like, I thought that people within the Democratic Party, like Elizabeth Warren, actually wanted to affect change. Um, and that's why I wanted her to be president over Hillary Clinton, because even when I was a Democratic Party Kool-Aid drinker, I at least acknowledged that the party was too right-leaning. And I thought that people like Elizabeth Warren had the courage to, you know, take the party in a new direction. But looking at the 2020 Democratic Party primary, it's just almost unfathomable how different my perception is now, because this election really was mask off for Democrats, because they're proving that almost none of them believe in anything. I mean, you have a couple people who I think are actually left-leaning and want to affect change in the country, but overall, most Democrats are proving that they really don't stand for anything. It's party above people. They're going to be with their team. It doesn't matter how foolish and hypocritical they look. It's the Democratic Party, and if you don't love them and worship them, then, um, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. So let me just use Elizabeth Warren as an example because she was someone who I respected so much. So back in 2018, when I was trying to put aside my feelings of disappointment in her after she refused to endorse Bernie Sanders in 2016, you know, she said this about Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and when she said this at the time, I genuinely was foolish enough to believe her. Yesterday was an extraordinary day when a woman came forward to make heartfelt claims about something terrible that had happened to her. The man in question could stand up and behave as if he is entitled to this position and launch a political attack and simply declare that, no, it's not true. We have to acknowledge what's going on in our country is wrong and it does not represent our values. What we should be celebrating is the fact that we are willing to fight back. We are willing to raise our voices. We are willing to say we will be heard in this country. So I loved what she said there. You know, uh, Brett Kavanaugh seemed entitled to the position. I noticed that as well. You know, women uh, will be heard in this country. Of course, that's something that is absolutely necessary. And she went a little bit further in a tweet saying, I still believe Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, this was a year later in 2019, and like the man who appointed him, Brett Kavanaugh should be impeached. So think about how strong her condemnation of Brett Kavanaugh is. The allegations brought forward by Dr. Christine Blasey Ford are so serious that she literally believes a sitting Supreme Court justice should be impeached. That is a very strong statement. And it's part of the reason why, even after I kind of saw that Elizabeth Warren didn't have as solid of a spine as I had previously thought, she still is willing to go a little bit further than other Democrats, at least rhetorically. But contrast that with what she's saying today. When it comes to arguably more serious allegations brought forward against Joe Biden by Tara Reid with even more corroborating support than Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, well, she's no longer saying what she said. All that sentiment about believing women has gone out the window because as Alexander Bolton of The Hill writes, Senator Elizabeth Warren told reporters late Monday that she found presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden's denial of sexual assault allegations by a former Senate aide credible and convincing. I believe that everyone has a right to tell her story, to be listened to and treated with respect, Warren told reporters, 
after she walked into the Capitol for a late afternoon vote. Quote, I saw the reports of what Ms. Reed said. I saw the interview with Vice President Biden. I appreciate that the Vice President took a lot of questions, tough questions, and that he answered them directly and respectfully. The progressive senator also said the Vice President's answers were credible and convincing. Later, asked if she thinks an independent investigation into Reed's claims, something a couple other Democratic senators have endorsed, is needed, Warren said, I think what the Vice President president has said is convincing and I support him. So do you understand how troubling this is? In 2019, she was willing to go further than most Democrats in calling for Brett Kavanaugh to be impeached. And now she won't even go as far as other Democrats who have signed on to an independent investigation into Tara Reid's claims which, if he's innocent, is harmless. She stands for absolutely nothing. Maybe when she was first elected, she actually was idealistic. She actually did want to make a difference. But now it's really clear what Liz Elizabeth Warren is all about. Elizabeth Warren. She wants power by any means necessary, and when asked whether or not she would be Joe Biden's running mate, um, for the first time ever, she answered the question directly without meandering and bringing in, you know, um, her family history. She just simply said, yes. We have seen the importance of having a leader that we can count on in a crisis. It's not Donald Trump. It is Joe Biden. If he asked you to be his running mate, would you say yes? Yes. She cares about power. Elizabeth Warren cares about power. And she will throw away everything she previously stood for if that's going to get her closer to the power that she so desperately craves. You know what they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And you don't necessarily even have to get power to let it corrupt you. Just being in the vicinity of power, that's enough to corrupt you and turn you into... The same type of ghoul who she used to fight against, or at least I think she used to fight against. Maybe that was all political theater. Who knows at this point? But Elizabeth Warren is an absolute clown, and nobody should take her seriously. Nobody should take her seriously after this election cycle. And look, you don't even have to go back that far. You don't have to go back to 2019. There are examples in 2020 of her saying that basically we have no reason not to believe women. Take a look at what she said about Mike Bloomberg when she was asked about whether or not, you know, she believes the women who Mike Bloomberg is refusing to release from non-disclosure agreements. This is what she said. She was very clear. So much, Brian. Do you believe that the former mayor of New York said that to a pregnant employee? Well, a pregnant employee sure said that he did. Why shouldn't I believe her? You know, I'm just really tired of this world. This one is personal for me. It really is. But you pregnancy believe that Gabbas, you believe he's that kind of person real. who did that. Look, pregnancy discrimination yeah. is real. And these, we have gone on and on and on where people say, oh, I can't really believe the woman. Really? Why not? So you say that you believe Joe Biden and you don't believe Tara Reid. My question to you now, Liz, is really? Why not? Why can't you believe Tara Reid? Have you not seen the countless photos and videos of Joe Biden touching women, sniffing their hair, invading their personal space? Have you not heard from Lucy Flores as well as the other women who said that he made them feel uncomfortable? Is it really that difficult to believe Tara Reid? I think that I would respect her more if she just said, look, I believe Tara Reid and I think Joe Biden probably did what, um, what she says he did. That's hard for me to say as a very loyal Democrat, but I believe women, so I believe Tara Reid. However, I'm still going to support Joe Biden, and yes, I would still be his VP because it would at least show some level of you know consistency. Because you're not going to get the VP anyway. Like, you made a fool of yourself in 2016 when Hillary Clinton dragged you along because she made you think you'd get the VP position, and you didn't. So you're doing that again 
and you didn't learn. So, I mean, one of two things, if not both things, are true about Elizabeth Warren. Either she has the worst political instincts ever, or she has no spine. I think it's probably both. But, I mean, this is just, how could you not see this? And let me just say, everyone is human. Nobody is perfectly consistent. I try my very best to be consistent, but I'm sure that if you go back in the Humanist Report catalog, you could see some in inconsistencies with what I've said now, in spite of the fact that I try very hard to be consistent. But I'll admit, you know, we're not perfect beings. We're flawed. Human beings are inherently flawed. And oftentimes, you know, our ideologies and opinions change with life experience. So, you know, maybe that leads to greater inconsistency. But this is brazen. She's going back on things she said last year. How are you not embarrassed? How can you, with a straight face, defend Joe Biden after all of the things you just said, all of the powerful statements you said about believing women just recently? I just, they have no shame. And they think that they can pretend like everything is okay and that voters are going to forget about this, but they're not going to forget. This is precisely why so many people don't vote. They just check out of electoral politics because it's all a fucking show. Nobody stands for anything. Nobody means what they say. Everyone in DC is just jockeying for a better position of power. That's it. Nobody gives a flying fuck about getting any policies implemented. That's why so many fucking people check out. That's why so many people who I know who were excited to come out and vote have just kind of thrown their heads up and said, fuck it, what's the point? Nobody believes in anything. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's all a show. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I believe that everyone should vote. I believe we have to use the tools that we have to make our voices heard loud and clear. So we should vote. Come out and vote. But you have to at least understand why people are so demoralized. It's because of things like this. People who previously used to inspire voters make them think that the system was working because people like Elizabeth Warren could get into the Senate. Now they're leading to, you know, it being delegitimized and they're not trying to do anything to redeem it. They're not even paying lip service to the fact that we're so disappointed. Like, we're all just supposed to put aside all the negative things that Elizabeth Warren and Beto O'Rourke and Kamala Harris and Cory Booker said about Joe Biden, and now we're supposed to believe that they believe that he's the best person ever. And, you know, they uh, love the fact that he's the nominee. You're so fake. And I hate this. This is why people tune out of politics. Because of shit like this. Elizabeth Warren is no help. So, I mean, I used to think that she was one of the better ones, but now she's absolutely part of the problem. This brazen lack of consistency and just open hypocrisy. I I don't know how they're not ashamed to look themselves in the mirrors. How does Elizabeth Warren live with herself? And she said that Bernie's base was built on a foundation of hate. Yeah. Your base is built on a foundation of bullshit. And it stinks so bad, I could smell it across the country. You may be in D.C., but we know you stand for nothing. You're a phony, Elizabeth Warren. You're a hack. You put party above people. And you should really just stop because you're embarrassing yourself. Beta male.